How's it going guys? We are back on the whip. Today we're doing something a little different. A little something outside of the box. We are going through Mark and our Bible study men's group at our church. We're rolling into chapter 8 this week. Feeds 400. Now back a couple chapters ago. 4,000. 4,000 people. Yeah, I did not exaggerate that. It says 4,000. You said 400. Oh, that said 400? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Well, a couple a couple chapters ago, back in chapter six, he fed five hundred. Five thousand. Five thousand. <laughs> I keep going hundred, but I'll edit all that. Out. But uh, no, leave it. He fed twenty thousand people. Scott, he fed two people. Yeah, a couple people. You know, they, <laughs> he fed a few. They was hungry. You know, <laughs> I mean, they only had a couple of loaves of bread. <laughs> so, he fed a few people. I mean, they fed what they could. <laughs> you know. It's not like miracles happen or anything. Could you imagine like Fuzzy being with with Jesus and Jesus going, so how many people you think's here? I don't know, four or five. <laughs> It'd be like hey, thousands. Thousands. <laughs> a couple. I mean, we got enough food for you. I mean, if we don't, you got it. I mean, we're talking about Bible study. Like we're trying to look at the point of view, you know, from the disciples. You know, you know. Yeah. Uh, but could you imagine being a disciple and being with Jesus and, and, and that happening and like just one just just one disciple look at it and be like, hey, you got us, bro, right? <laughs> like, right. Like, it's on you. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm kind of, <laughs> I'm kind of strapped right now. Right, right, right. So each week we do a, a section of Mark. And so like on this week we do Mark 8, 1 through 13. And we do them at our, our house. It, individually but when we do that we ask ourselves like five questions and, and it's always the same five questions yes yes it's it's always the same five questions every, every single week what does it mean what does it teach me about god uh what of this aspect of character changes my view of self uh humanity uh how, view of humanity uh then response yeah how do we respond from that? now i will say our we are not perfect we're still sinners and we're no better than anybody else but our walk has uh has gotten better absolutely uh we still fall short so we're not you know we're not better than anyone else no. uh and we're not trying to be <coughs> uh, but we just want to share a little bit about about what we do during the week by doing this right here, so you get a little insight on Buzzy and Peanut. Uh, now, if you want to do this at home, like feel free. We can shoot you the questions yeah. that we ask ourselves. And if you want to dive into the chapter with us, also, you know, you're not the group. Feel free. All right. Jesus feeds the four thousand. During those days, another large crowd gathered. Since they had nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples to him and said we have compassion i have compassion for these people they have already been with me three days and have nothing to eat if i send them home hungry they will collapse on the way because some of them have come long a long distance his disciples answered but well, where in this remote place can we get enough food to feed them how many loaves do we have jesus asked seven they replied he told the crowd to sit down on the ground. When he had taken the seven loaves, he gave them to give them He broke them and gave them to his disciples to distribute to the people. And they did so. They had a small, they had a few small fish as well. He gave thanks to them and also told his disciples to distribute them. The people ate and were satisfied. Afterwards, the disciples picked up seven baskets, seven baskets of broken pieces that were left over. About 4,000 were present. After he had sent them away, he got to the boat, to his boat, to his disciples, and went to the region of Damascus. The Pharisees came and began to question him. To test him, they asked him for a sign from heaven. He sighed, he sighed deeply and said, Why does this generation ask for a sign? Truly, I tell you, no sign will be given to him. Then he left them, got back into his boat, and crossed to the other side. What we just learned is in the past, in the, in the very past, in the, in the last 
section of chapter seven that we just got done reading, he healed a uh, epic. Yeah. Um, and we, I believe, this gentleman was. Uh, I think this happened at this junk, at junction. I think this is where it happened. Matthew gives a little bit more uh, detailed description of what happens. Um, he tells them that, you know, Matt, Matthew tells us in this section that he's healing people, that he's having miracles right there in front of everybody. And uh, and I believe that's where he healed the, uh, the mute fellow. When I say, when he says compassion for these people, I'm going to go back for a minute. And anybody who's read Mark will know what I'm talking about. If you've read the gospel, I'm talking about. If you haven't, please go back and read this. There's a woman that comes to him, and he speak, Jesus speaks a lot of parables. And he comes to this woman, this woman, is, 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 her, her, her daughter is possessed by a demon. And she comes out of nowhere and she's like, hey, you know, heal my daughter. And he's like, hey, you know, the bread is for the children. The dogs get the crumbs. And she came back and was like, okay, but I'm here for my crumbs. What she was saying was, I know I'm not worthy because she was a Gentile. She was not from her people where she was from. They weren't believers in Christ. They didn't, they didn't believe in all that. They didn't go to church. They didn't do any of that. And, but she was saying, I know my worth. I know that I'm not worthy of this, but I do know of your mercy and your grace. And I know that you will give it to me because I know that you can that what he was telling her was it's not your time I'm talking to the Jewish people right now I'll get to you but right now it's not your time and I think you have to understand that because where he's at now when he was feeding the 5,000 chapter a couple chapters ago he was feeding Jewish people he was feeding the people he was there for these people with the 4,000 men they're Gentiles they're like this woman they're not, they're not, they're Gentiles. They're not Christians. They're not Jewish. They're not, they're not believers. So he's, now he's talking to them. This is an open thing. And I think that's where the compassion comes in. When he says, I have compassion for these people. Now he's, now he's opened up everything. Now he's not just talking to the Jewish people. He's talking to people. People who haven't been more. I mean, at what point do you think this 
I'm not saying to commit a sin. I'm just saying if you commit one, don't freak out and be like, he's not going to love me. He's not going to be there for me. Right. He's not going to be there for me. But, but sometimes you, I, 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 want, I don't want to say you have to commit sin. You don't have to. But you have to learn from your mistakes. So if, if you can recognize that it's a sin and know it's a sin and feel remorse from sinning, that's the step you need to take. Well, that's what, exactly what I was saying earlier. Like, you take that conviction because that's what it is. You take that conviction, take it for what it is, and use it. So, so I'm to teach me about God. And then if I send them away fasting to their own houses, they will faint, by the way. I mean, he knew that if they didn't eat, they weren't going to make it. Right. Uh, in their eagerness, they seem not to have thought of the need of provisions. For such a length of time, but the Lord thought of it. It is, I will not send them away fasting. Or rather, to send them away fasting, I will do it. So, I mean, he's like, he, he still got you. Yeah. Well, that was my teach. Well, what does it teach me about God? It teaches me that teaches me that we have a compassionate God. Well, an understanding God. Yeah. Like there's some things that if you do, He's gonna be like, I got, come, come on, you know, you know that was wrong. Like, right. like, like I, I can't understand. I can't justify why you right. did what you did. Like, yeah. You, you, like, no, and. That becomes to where you got to stop thinking that even before you committed whatever sin it is, you thought about it beforehand. Yeah. So if you're thinking about it, like say you committed a crime, you thought about it, planned it out in your head before. Yeah. You've already sinned before you even committed a crime. Right. <laughs> like. Yeah. Like it, it's it's what? Well, hey, you know, I didn't rob that bank, but you got like a plan over here written down. Right. <laughs> Like you got the plan together. <laughs> so you already it's not because it's not a physical act of just sinning. It, it's, it's a mental. thought it's yeah. a thought process too. So how does this aspect of character change my view of self? Compassion on all people. So I say that is because we are quick to judge. Yeah. And and we're quick to judge people when they go to tell their story like maybe they come to you they want to tell you something get off the chest yeah. and like within seconds we're automatically judging that person right for whatever the case may be we're judging that person not based off their looks but based off their story they're telling the world oh mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. like we are so quick to judge instead of just stopping and going keep talking bro yeah yeah let's think of Let's work this out. Right. And no matter what it is, a sister coming to you and say, you know, I have an addiction or whatever, right off the bat, we're quick to go, oh, I don't want to be around you because you have an addiction. Yeah. But she's not going to hurt you. Physically. Or, or mentally. But we're, 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 we're all guilty of that. So we just got to have to love one another for who they are. Right. And it, but, it, but in saying that, it, it, it's harder to do it than it is to say it. Because at the time of, of, of confrontation, your mind's in a routine and you automatically go and jump to it. So you got to pray about it, and then he's going he's gonna to give it to you. Right. Then you'll do the next thing. No, you be talking about somebody you never even met before, and it's going to dawn on you. I know this person. We had a 30-minute conversation. Yeah. <laughs> about their life. Yeah. <laughs> and, that, and then you'll start thinking, I hadn't judged them. I hadn't thought anything. Yeah. I'm, I'm willing to want to know more and to help that person. Right. Uh, because I mean, I think that's you know, oh, that's the way Jesus is. Right. It, is if you would come to him, like you know, I got some thoughts going through my mind, and he'd be like, "It's okay, dude. I got you. Yeah. Let's sit and talk about it, and then he'll feed you. Right. <laughs> and then it's like you do. But but then also, as the person that you're defining to, you're stressed out about being judged by the person. That, that you're talking to, right? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it's like I don't want to. I don't want to tell Fuzzy that I cut my toenails this way and not this way because he's gonna be like, this dude is weird. 